Ever wondered how far you get in Blender in three weeks? No, me neither. Honestly, it seems like kind of an odd number. Like at that point, just go for four. But apparently my friend has things that he wants to do this summer. So we're doing three. Basically how it happened was I asked him if he wanted to do a Blender competition. He said, sure. I laid out a rule set. He said, sure. I said four weeks. He said no. And thus the Blender bash was established. A two man battle winner takes all. So the answer for how far you specifically can get in Blender in three weeks is slightly farther than I did, hopefully. I'll lay out my strategy, what I did right, what I did wrong. And then hopefully you can just sort of take that information and iterate on it. And by the end of three weeks, Weeks, you can be the ninja blevins of blending. So let's get started. So already I knew it was off to quite a bit of a disadvantage. My friend Colin has a bit more blending experience than I do, which isn't really saying much considering that the most I've ever done was duplicate the cube twice and then quit when the cube didn't do what I wanted. But hey, an advantage is an advantage. I mean, at this point he was already known as the big blender boy in our discord due to how much of a blender utilizing boy he was. So I was slightly worried starting out. My plan was to optimize the learning process as much as possible, pick up the things that made the most sense to my smooth little monkey brain and then just apply those to the best of my abilities. But I'm already getting ahead of myself. I had to start in the same place that all prospective fruit destruction devices start and that is with the donut tutorial. So donut tutorial, great place to start out. Teaches you the absolute basics of what you need to know without overwhelming you with information. Perfect day one task. Things however didn't go very well, like he'd be doing something and then I'd try to do it, but then it'd look off in some weird way. So then I'd get mad and try to fix it for an hour, but I couldn't even figure out how to look up how to fix things. This is something that probably every single person that starts trying to learn something faces. This short period in the beginning where you're too underdeveloped to even figure out how to find solutions to your own problems. It's like being a toddler in the real world, but imagine if you were actively aware of how fucking stupid you were when you were tripping over your own feet and babbling like an idiot. It doesn't sound fun, does it? It's really frustrating and probably the main reason why most beginners quit, but allow me to let you you in on a little secret that most beginners don't know. This is a donut. When you think of that sort of dream image that you want to model in your head, how often does that model include a donut? Basically what I'm saying is this object as a final project is probably going to be completely worthless. Like you're never going to use it. And even if it is a perfect donut, it's probably just going to end up sitting in your computer for years because what if you eventually need a donut for a model? Where else are you supposed to find that sort of thing? So yeah, it's worthless at best or worst or and a minor detriment at worst or best. But that's a good thing because it means that the final product doesn't matter at all. This is my first big tip. The first thing that you really need to know in order to get through those first few projects, just stop caring about the final product. If something is just not working, first check the comments section because honestly, they're normally really helpful. But if there's nothing there, then just move on. Leave as is because whether it looks like this or this or this or this or this or this is not really going to make that much of a difference in the long run. So with that sort of philosophy in mind, I finished up the tutorial pretty quick. And from here, Mr. Guru actually leads you to a four week guide on how to go from a complete beginner to making something worth submitting to a competition to which my immediate reaction was, wow, what a reasonable and well thought out time frame. What kind of idiot would stray from such a concept? But that's the end of day one. I think it went pretty well. My plan from here is just to sort of follow the Andrew Price four week guide and then hopefully speed it up by a week. And by the end of it, I'll be in a good spot. Anvil. 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 Do not follow the Andrew Price four week guide. Well, okay, maybe that's a bit extreme, but I do feel like it needs some uh, addendums. So the Anvil tutorial. Listen, I'm not gonna say it's bad because it's not bad. It can be followed, but the problem is that it's from 2017. Blender is no longer in 2017. It is very difficult to follow these tutorials because there's a lot of cross-referencing with the comments that you have to do in order to actually get what you need because all of the words are in 2017 terms instead of 2022 terms, which gets really confusing. And also in terms of intermediacy, it's a bit more of an advanced intermediate than a beginner intermediate. And the combination of those two things makes it very difficult to actually follow along. Instead, try chair. Chair is very good, sleek, effective, and much easier to follow if this is your second model ever. After, if you feel like doing the anvil, go right ahead, knock yourself out, slam your head into a wall for eight hours for all I care, but I just feel like the chair is conceptually much easier to follow along with. So after that, you do a practical application of the skills that you learned, which I failed because I couldn't figure out how to apply the modeling tools properly, which is about when I realized how important it is to have that skill. Modeling really is just like the base of the hierarchy of needs of Blender. If you don't know how to model properly, then you're not really going to be able to do anything else. So I once again decided to gently drift away from the four week plan. I'll be back to follow it through to the end though, I promise. I set off to the internet to look for a more advanced modeling course. And at this point, I'd actually like to introduce big tip number two. It's something that I like to refer to as the watching videos, but then not actually applying the knowledge that you're learning. So it just sort of flies in one ear and out the other effect. 
the name is still in development. What I'm trying to say is that when we're learning new stuff, the brain releases dopamine because learning new stuff good. But what can happen is that we watch a video, leech out all the dopamine that we get for learning something new, but then none of it actually gets absorbed because none of it was ever actually applied. And then what ends up making it worse is that these types of fasts, not supposed to be followed along with tutorials, get more views, so then people make more of them, and then they get watched more, and it sort of creates this cycle of violence that I am most definitely not contributing to. Please continue watching this video. Thankfully though, it's something that's pretty easy to control as long as you know that you're the type of idiot that's actively susceptible to it. It's it's me. I'm the I'm the type of idiot that's actively susceptible to it. After losing like half a day to my own stupidity, I decided to make a rule where I would only watch like one or two of these videos in between doing actual projects. And again, I'm not saying these videos are like bad or evil or anything. In fact, there was a couple techniques that I saw in these videos that I ended up stealing when I did my final project. But it's important to keep in mind that they're not great at teaching you stuff unless you follow along because most of what's being said isn't going to stick. It's always better to go with longer form tutorials that you can follow along with in real time time and then make the same mistakes that they do and then be told how to fix those mistakes. So anyway, as I was saying, you want to find an advanced modeling tutorial to follow along with. A car is cool, that's what I went with. I'll link the one that I did, but I wouldn't really recommend it, mainly because it's not finished and also because during part three the dude's recording glitched and then I wasn't really able to follow along anymore, but this one looks cool I guess. Go follow this one, I suppose. So after finishing 2.3 parts of a car tutorial, I was finally feeling a lot more confident in my modeling skills, and I really didn't have time to start a whole different car tutorial because I was going to have to take a three-day break, so it was time to move on again. So it's at this point where you really have to ask yourself, what do you need to know to make what you want, and how long do you have to learn it? By this point, you already have a base understanding of everything that Blender can be used for, and you'd start branching out into whatever category you'd want to specialize in first, like architecture or other stuff, but I'll just be taking you through the path that I followed because it's really my only point of reference. So deal with it, you're coming with me. In the four week guide, Senior Guru recommends to just grab a character model and place it into the environment, which is a good idea. I, however, can't do that because my dumbass decided to make a stupid rule before we start the competition about how we're not allowed to use foreign assets, so anything in our scene has to be created by us, which was really dumb. Rule 2.5, use assets. Don't waste your time making shittier versions of objects that already exist. Anyway, that meant because I wanted to have a character in my scene, it was time to figure out how to model a human. For that, I would heavily suggest this video series by Tomcat. It's really long, but it's a super in-depth guide about every single minute detail in regards to making a character. I decided to immediately try making my own character, so I just sort of generally followed the guides. I spent around four hours modeling my own head and... Big tip number three, patience. It tends to be really difficult to redo a tutorial, especially after it took you a really long amount of time to do it. But the problem with art is that's exactly what you have to do if you want to get good at things. For complex objects like a human head, you can't just rush in and try to do your final project immediately. You kind of have to sit there and practice a few times before you're actually able to create something that you'll end up enjoying. This is always the one that I tend to have the most issues with personally. I've always been a sort of one and done type of guy, so having to repeat the same process over and over again is not really fun for me. Fortunately for my progress, however, I don't have time to worry about what is or is not fun. So I slept on it for a night, woke up the next day, and immediately started up again. I made it much easier for myself this attempt, which I highly suggest. Just use his reference and follow along closely. You can model your own stuff when you understand how everything works. Also this time, I paid a lot more attention to all of the words that he was saying. The problem with these videos, which isn't actually a problem with the videos, it's more a problem with my attention span, is that he sort of says everything once with a similar level of importance, but there's some parts where he says incredibly important things nonchalantly while I was like editing my model or something, but this time I caught everything. Probably. And I got the results I wanted, and for now, it was time to start moving on to learning how to do the rest of my scene. So geometry nodes are really cool, just like an amazing new technology that unlocks so much potential with Blender, and you probably shouldn't try to learn them this early. I had this idea for like a grassy plane that I was going to build with nodes, but the problem is there's very few tutorials for geometry nodes, and there's very few tutorials for moving grass, and I could not find a single overlapping case of the two. If you really feel like learning nodes, I highly recommend this tutorial series by Crossbind Studio. It teaches you everything you think you need, and more. But yeah, that's just about it for my learning process. Now it's time to actually build what I was going to build. In the playlist in the description though, I'm probably just going to add a couple extra links to the end to stuff that you should watch before building your first scene if you're feeling it. Like a sculpting tutorial that I used to create the very first rough draft of my character and some other stuff. But now it was time to grind. 
So for the face and the body of the character, I actually just watched a speed model by this guy and then copied all of his motions. It worked pretty well and I learned quite a bit because I had to figure out what he was doing instead of just being told what he was doing. Making clothes was simple enough, but the cloth systems kept creating nightmare imagery, so I had to drop it like my third child and move on to doing something else. So for my actual scene, I started out by trying to use a noise texture, which didn't work, and then I tried sculpting it, which also didn't work, but then I tried sculpting it after actually applying the scale and it worked. Something that I'm starting to realize as I'm doing this is that it normally takes like four hours of doing something wrong before you actually figure out how to do it right, which really makes me wish that I had left myself with more time. But I don't really have time to start making wishes about time right now. So I modeled the tree badly, and then it was time to start making geometry nodes for the grass. This was by far the largest mistake that I made out of the entire three week period. I was already not a big grass fan before I started this project. It scares me and people won't stop telling me to touch it, but modeling grass has made me wish that I owned a fucking flamethrower so that I had a way to take out my aggression. I'm sure I just did it wrong because again, no clue what the hell I'm doing, but overall grass placement ended up taking like three days to figure out and resulted in a total of 20,000 moving objects, which would cause working on the project to be very difficult and for rendering to be a process. So on the last day, I finished the character, animated it, and just kind of threw it in, hit the render button so that it'd be all good in the morning. However, when I woke up, I realized that I hated the animation because it looked stupid, so I changed it a little and then hit render again, to which my blender crashed. Twice. See, it's really difficult for Blender to render out a project when there's 20,000 blades of grass constantly moving in the wind. So basically, I was fucked. So I started scrambling. But with only 20 minutes left until the Big Bash, there was very little that I could actually do. And I just kind of had to accept the fact that things were going to be janky. Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to the Blender Bash, a tournament of champions in which two Blender babies compete to see who can become the Blender Boss. I'm your host Jonathy, here with my co-host Jonathy, yeah. and it looks like we have one incredible show for you tonight folks, so without further ado, allow me to introduce our judges. First up, the master of the virtual world, the king of code, we have... Hudson. Hi, I'm Hudson, and I join you here today from the Metaverse. Next up, the 2012 Blender Championship champion. We have Jacob. I'm here because I know a thing or two about blending. Neutral bullet, magic bullet, ninja bullet. I could blend them all, but today yeah? we're blending in the virtual world. The cyberspace, which is where I grew up. And last but certainly not least, we have a figure truly shrouded in mystery. And his name... Oh man! Hello, and welcome to this special event. For you guys here at home, in the audience, and watching all around the world, thank you for attending, and let's have a good night. Now, to introduce the contestants themselves. First off, the Blender Boy himself, Colin. Hello, I'm Colin, and I blend. And then there's the, the other guy. Yeah. Contestants will show their work to the judges and be graded in four categories. Each judge will pick their favorite piece, and the contestant with the most votes wins. So, without further ado, let's show these blending pieces. First up, Colin. What a tasteful piece by Colin, wouldn't you say, Jonathan? Yeah. A dark yet powerful scene, perfectly assisted by its use of lighting. All right, now let's look at the uh, the other one. Oh, life could be a dream, Shaboom. If I could take you up in paradise, Supervive, Shaboom. In stark contrast to Colin's piece, here we have a beautiful, serene scene by the other guy. It uses texturing and movement beautifully. However, there does seem to be some sort of compositing error around the character, so we'll have to see how our judges respond to that. What an incredible performance by both Blender Babies. Wouldn't you agree, Jonathan? Yeah. But there can only be one winner. So it's time for the judges to make their decisions. John, overall, you did a very good job of portraying a dynamic scene. It had many components. Thank you, Chef. However, the two models, that was a bit of a deal breaker for me. So, for my final choice, Colin, you're moving on to the next round. <laughs> Colin, overall the composition was great, the lighting was dramatic, it enchanted me, and because of that, Colin, I vote for you. <laughs> Some beautiful statements. However, we need to come to a final verdict. So it's, it's been like a long night. Final verdict. Of deliberation. Decided. No, not yet. Not yet. You, you have yet to see the full story. We'll start with Colin. 
Another heartwarming tale of a boy of a million polygons. <laughs> and he whittled it down. <laughs> <laughs> then we have John Doe. Little boy on the left side. That was a little girl. Tree. That was a girl. Right? Was okay, that a girl? Little boy. Yeah, yeah, it was a girl. A little boy on the left side and his favorite tree. Brings a tear to my eye. But there can only be one. And that's why this year's Blender Boss has got to be Colin overall. I thought you chose John, though. Didn't you both choose Colin? So yeah, after some final deliberations about point systems, it was officially decided that I had lost. Kind of sad about it, but at the end of the day, I'm still pretty happy with how far I got. So final words of advice, remember the 3.5 rules, maybe stick slightly closer to the Andrew Price four week plan because I missed out on a lot of realism aspects that could have improved my render. And maybe try doing something slightly less difficult than grass, maybe something indoors or just something that doesn't involve large amounts of moving objects. And final thoughts regarding my loss, I mean, to be honest, I expected it. My ideas weren't really that creative and I didn't give my final project nearly enough time. But that's all stuff that can be fixed next time. The kind of girl you bring next time. If it makes you happy, you can't.